Say you want to break down a replay ID of a high level Vitaly player? I could. Is a is is a burger still in here? Yo, JMZ. No, that, that's actually not a bad idea. All right, Burger. I'm gonna see if I can find old boy who I was talking about. Oh, here we go. Yeah, Rama needs buffs. That's the homie. This is his name. For Barber, Barber Toast and Jamesy Burger, this is the dude. This is who I was talking about. All right, so I'm gonna break down some options to what he do and why he do it to kind of give y'all a understanding of like, why high level players do what they do. Cause I know a lot of people ask me and they tell me like, why do y'all move the way y'all move? Why y'all make the decisions that y'all make? Like it's a thought behind everything. Everything is done with a reason. Power, power. Round one. All right. Fight. So we gonna start off by turning on these uh, key display and attack now. All right, so as you can see, he started off with a standard fear as soon as the game started. Now, why he did that is because most Balrogs, they typically like to start the round off with light straight. But this Balrog, he delayed his straight. But that back fear explains why he did that, because he wanted to catch the straight and punt, well, crush counter the startup. But in this matchup, Balrog is able to bully Mikali with straights. Kali has to really play his cards right. So he's using the puke to help him move close in. Alright, so right here. Alright, y'all see that he throws the puke down. He throws the puke down, and then right here. Right here, y'all see him moving back and forth. Now, why is he moving back and forth? because he's waiting for Balrog to jump. I can give you that right now. He's waiting for Balrog to jump. I'm surprised he's not anti Aaron, but I can bet my last dollar that that move back and forth was uh, to bait the jump. Now he tried to come back out. Balrog did a good idea at uh, 3 minutes. This sequence right here is all for corner presence. All for corner presence. Nikali wants to get Balrog to the corner as fast as he can. All right? Now, what I wouldn't have done in this situation was that he tried to backdash. And because he tried to backdash, Balrog had an EX straight coming, which is the reason why he got hit. That was a good challenge on his part. Yep. Yep. In this matchup, Nikali has to commit to a lot of moves because if if Nikali decides to play patient, he can easily get overwhelmed by Balrog because Balrog can easily bully this character with straights. So the fact that Rama is staying active and neutral and making it hard for him to just commit to straight, this is how you this is how you want to play this matchup. And once again, you see that he starts to round off with a button, trying to stuff a startup. But this time he got caught. Never make this decision against a Balrog that does V skill 2 after the charge up, because we're basically baiting you to want to try and punish it. I don't know why he grabbed him, but he could have got a way bigger damage out there. Alright, he's slowly bullying him. Yeah, so as you can see, as he's getting bullied with straights, he's trying to commit to some, some sort of button, right? As he's getting bullied by straight, he's committing to a button. Because he knows, he knows that Balrog is just able to bully him. So that was a good round. <clears throat> Dying off the peanut butter. <coughs>
I need to take me another scoop. Bro, I think you need some milk for that peanut butter. Bro, I always keep water next to me. Hey, that was a good screw smash on this part. He kind of committed to it, but that was a good screw smash. Another missed time command grab. All right, y'all, so whenever you activate trigger and you see that your opponent didn't get hit by the activation hit, it's always a safe option to go for a grab because of two options. One, if they don't be reversal, you can go for a grab or get the grab. Or two, if they decide to be reversal like this Balrog did, grab always wins. Grab will always win. Anytime your activation hit is blocked, you're never wrong for going for a grab or going for a stagger hit. But in most situations, you're never wrong with going for a grab. Never wrong. Alright, so as of right now, he's just he's just setting up a wall of defense. He's setting up a complete wall of defense. Like he got the puke on the ground, he's putting the waves out. So if he decides that he can't commit to no straight. He cannot commit to no straight right now because it's a complete wall that he cannot get through. And as you can see, the Balrog is starting to jump because he doesn't want to be put in this wall of defense. He's going to commit to a jump. Oh, no, he's starting to pressure. <clears throat> that was a good walk up though. No, that's not good, buddy. Can't do that. Yeah, that's negative seven. Oh, you can't, you can't do that, buddy. And down goes Frazier. So yeah, y'all, most of the time, when you're looking at high level movement, it's either one, they're trying to create a situation to where they can force you to whiff a button. Two, they're using their movement to slowly take the space and make you uncomfortable to where you really start wanting to hit buttons. Or three, they're using their movement to basically create a situation that's going to work out in their favor. So the whole point of just moving back and forth is to create a situation that you want to have made. But that's like a good insight. And even luckily, I knew if I decided to watch a Balrog replay, it'll really benefit y'all even more because I know Nikali has a... Uh, I know generally uh, Nikali has a struggle against Balrog because of the simple fact that he can get bullied with straights. Like, Balrog is able to make Nikali commit to stuff that he normally don't want to commit to. Like, Nikali has to commit to so much just to not get bullied by straights. <clears throat> he has to commit to neutral jumps, throwing out moves to try and catch the startup of straights. Like, it's a lot of stuff. It's a lot of stuff.